Welcome to our segment, Chatting with the Filmmakers of Remembrance at this year's 2024 Nichibei Foundation's Films of Remembrance. We are honored to speak with Sharon Yamato and Yuriko Gamo Romer, whose films are being shown at this year's Films of Remembrance. Sharon's film, One Fighting Irishman, focuses on the story of attorney Wayne M. Collins, whose defense of the Constitution drove him to spend 23 years representing Japanese Americans who renounced their American citizenship while imprisoned at the embattled Tule Lake Segregation Center. Sharon recounts the motivation of creating this film. Um, I started making films again a long time ago, but one of the things that I've always wanted to do is profile people of, you know, of courage. But in 2014, um, Wayne Collins' son, Wayne Merrill Collins, actually came to an ex accepted an award on behalf of his father. And that's where I really became obsessed with talking about his father and all the work that he did to help Japanese Americans that was unrecognized by the population at large. What was fascinating about his presentation was the fact that um, he met so much, uh, his father had met with so many obstacles from major organizations like the National ACLU and the National JCL. So that whole conflict um, was fascinating to me. So that was um, one of the things that prompted me to, to want to tell his story in a more detailed way. Telling a story of a man's quest to right wrongs over decades is not easy, as Sharon shares. I have to say that making a film is is probably one of the most difficult things that that someone like me has to do. I mean, I, in a lot of ways, I prefer writing because it's, I'm, I have a lot more control over it, but uh, making a film requires so many different elements and different people. And it is such a joint, you know, community effort and it takes a long time. I mean, I, we could easily do a longer version of this film. Honestly, I could, I, we have enough footage to do an hour version. George Takei, narrator of Sharon's movie and famous actor, was deeply moved by this film, as Sharon explains. Um, George Takei was really helpful. I, and, you know, keep in mind, he was very young when he was at Tui Lake. I think he was only five or six. And so his his familiarity with the subject was, was kind of, you know, like most... Nisei today, who, whose parents lived through the experience, but they themselves have very little memory of it. In his case, you know, he, he was very close to his parents and he had, um, I don't know that he understood the, the extent of the, of the turmoil that his parents were facing at Tule Lake and it was really traumatic for them. I mean, we, had, we got a copy of his mother's affidavit that indicated just how, how perilous it was for her. Next, we visit with Yuriko Gamo Romer. Yuriko's film, Baseball Behind Barbed Wire, is a look at the World War II incarceration of Japanese Americans through the uncommon yet popular lens of baseball. Listen to Yuriko's motivation to make this film. In making the film, um, I essentially got to know Howard Zenimura and Tets Furukawa. And both those guys have passed on, but, um, and also kind of got some sense of uh, Kenichi Zenimura, who, who was Howard's father. Um, it, well, it's always fascinating to do this. When you're making a documentary film, you get to know somebody. And especially when you go back to edit the film, because you, you look at and you listen to what these people have said and so on and so forth over and over again, as you edit and, and often, they have no idea that you've become intimately involved in their lives. One of the interesting parts of making films is getting audience reactions, as Yuriko explains. Um, so one of the wonderful things about Baseball Behind Barbed Wire is that I've had some opportunity to screen the film. And the, the first two 
actually sneak preview screenings were for not Japanese American, not Asian American audiences. And the first time was at the at Cooperstown Annual Symposium on American Baseball and Culture. And it was a room filled with baseball fans, really baseball fans and baseball、uh, writers and so on. And it was really interesting because it was the most emotional screening, I think, as of yet. It, would, it started out with this elderly man who, who was probably in his 80s. And he was, he was choking back tears so much that people in the room probably thought he was having a heart attack. But when he finally was able to, to say something, he got up and he had tears in his eyes. And he talked about a friend of his who had been in Manzanar. And he had no idea what that meant. So, Also, very rewarding was that we had a chance to screen the film for a bunch of kids. And actually, this was in central rural Wisconsin. And it's a long story, but we ended up with a bunch of high school students. In fact, I think I calculated that we had shown it to over a thousand high school students over the course of a couple of days.、Um, and we ended up with a, a very positive reception for the film. And One of the things that I realized was it's really important for the, for the younger people, for the next generation to know this history and be aware in a way that people have to think twice about, you know, this could happen again. And hopefully, having the awareness and having a conversation in, in that generation will prevent it from happening again. And that's one of the things that I think is quite important. You can see Eureka's film as part of the 2024 Films of Remembrance program of Life and Death Behind Barbed Wire. And you can see Sharon's film as part of the Films of Resistance program. Tickets are available at 2024.filmsofremembrance.org. See you there. <laughs>